this is part uh, 14 of my tutorials on part number 14 in the series of tutorials about making um, uh, locomotive steam locomotive bogies and valve gear and I wanted to start by showing you this again which is the um, main driving bogie for the Letterkenny and Burton Port extension railways massive 484 tank uh, locomotive to three foot standard gauge because I think already you'll be able to recognize um, certain aspects of it uh, which I've already covered and I wanted to remind you that you know we're on the way and just to look at this uh, here we have well I've actually instead of calling it an axle I call it BR wheel 4 there's wheel 3, wheel 2 wheel number one but it's basically what I called axle in um, the previous tutorial and here we have the connecting rod and that is BR con rod now just and that is in the hierarchy let's have a look at the hierarchy and you can see BR con rod comes under BR wheel uh, one BR con rod two it's highlighted there because I've selected it comes under BR uh, wheel 1 which is this one here so that's exactly where we got to in the uh, previous tutorial and all the rest as you can see are, are, are very much we're just replicating those um, uh, those that hierarchy and that way of making things uh, some of the other things we've got eccentrics push rods things like that some of these are actually just my own name um, I'm sure it's not the correct name for them but anyway that's that's what I um, that's what I call them because it meant something to me and uh, here for example you can see that we've got what's that one that's an eccentric rod for part of this um, valve gear and if we just take it through very slowly And it's actually only on 30 frames, not 32 as I made. But you can see that there, uh, BR eccentric rod 2, look in the hierarchy, and you can see that that is connected to the axle uh, dummy here. All of these, by the way, if we take it right the way back to the very top of the hierarchy, everything is attached to this one, BR main and if we were to select that one there it is there and that is the one I mentioned in the last tutorial which is at um, point zero 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 XYZ zero and everything even if it's not animated is linked to that so that the whole model if I move this I'm not going to but if I was to move that everything would move and that's because that is the dummy that attaches to the point in the loco body mesh which um, is the main part of the model um, that as it were clips onto the attachment point remember that attachment point is those one of those little points there except they're not that when you first click on them unless you put constant screen size there so that is actually the attachment point for this is underneath in the in the loco mesh the body of the loco mesh and it's located at zero 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 so that means when this is added when this whole um just delete that when this whole bogey is automatically added onto the loco mesh the body mesh trains nose to place it so this this dummy is placed exactly where that point is placed now you can see quite a few other dummies in this and I wanted to show you this because it does look complex but it's deceit the complexity is a bit deceiving because uh, all I've done is I've gradually built up each different attachment so the first one was the connecting rod and we've done that in the last um, tutorial and you can see if I zoom in a bit you can see there is some I suppose you could call it detail I'm not quite sure what that is um, on the connecting it doesn't show up on the final model um, and we've got an eccentric here and we've got another one down here which is actually what are we calling that I can't remember now push rod I don't know if that's the right word or not um, 
but it's certainly got a dummy there which is called cool, which is controlling it there it is push rod o2 and if we just follow that we'll see what that does as we go around the animation well clearly it is connected to the axle dummy but the way in which it moves and this is where we will be editing it frame by frame the way which it moves controls the way in which this rod moves and then if we look a bit further on we'll find one which says piston hopefully or oh, crosshead <laughs> there we go so the crosshead and the piston rod there look and if we look at that we'll see how that moves as we move it frame by frame in fact all that's happening is it's moving backwards and forwards so the pusher rod or whatever it's called this connecting here is controlled by this dummy and um, as we continue clicking on the way in which I've edited the movement of uh, this dummy individually uh, frame by frame is to ensure that while this uh, end rotates around correctly this end simply is going backwards and forwards so that means getting that angle right on each individual uh, frame let's have a look at that because we can look down if you look down here you'll see the angles should change <laughs> let's hope there we go look it's already started to change and you can see the angle changing there the number of degrees which is altering in order to maintain the front end into in a horizontal position take it back to the beginning and that means that when we come to do this dummy which is the crosshead dummy controlling the piston and the crosshead there which is mounted above and below on these sliders sliding rods it is just going backwards and forwards because that's the so we're, as it were we're going backwards we're making this backwards from the direction in which power is transmitted to the wheels because the power comes from here transfers down this and drives the bogey but instead what we're doing is we've got the bogey animated and driving and now we're recreating the way in which energy is transferred to the bogey from the piston and the piston is moving in and out and we've got to convert that to the circular motion of the wheels and this is how we're doing it so we're all, all familiar about the way in which a steam engine uh, looks as it's going on with the side rods and all the rest of it but this is how we have to model it in train so this is the point where uh, this uh, this rod here uh, is converting circular motion or is, is transferring from um, horizontal more or less horizontal depends how the cylinder is set uh, but from movement in one axis in this direction to circular motion at the wheel and that's what we're recreating going to recreate and let's just see where that crosshead is linked in the hierarchy there it is and the only thing it's linked to is the, the one that controls the whole model and that's because it doesn't need to be rotating like the wheels uh, it can just move that backwards and forwards and so long as this uh, connecting rod is correctly positioned each time and we're adjusting that each time each frame then it gives the appearance of all being connected together but in fact it's actually operating as a separate model uh, or as a separate mesh independently um, independently animated if we look here one of the valve rods what's that doing well it's just going back and forth but significantly the angle of the rod is changing with each frame and the same is true here so it's replicating if we have a look and see where they and that comes under the crosshead because we want it to move backwards and forwards with this but at the same time it's got to pivot this rod because these these rods change their the angle between the two of them changes as they move backwards and forwards okay so this is the i think this is the reversing gear which i've modeled but you can't unfortunately you can't accurately model reversing gear so it does change in a model at least I haven't been able to 
maybe some clever clever person has. So that's the way in which the um, just wanted to show you that, show you how all these rods move together. Right, so now we're going back to our um, trial bogey, and it's uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, a cylinder, a piston rod, and a connecting rod to just this this particular uh, part of the bogey. And just make sure we're actually at the front. The front of a uh, any bogey is always at the bottom down here this is forward that is back so imagine an enormous arrow pointing down okay and so this is the direction in which the bogey uh, will travel so let's identify the front make sure we know we've got the right one there's the uh, eccentric pin and there it is so we know that this is the front of the bogey this is where the front of the locomotive is going to be as with the lock swilly bogey I just showed you but here it's over here so we're going to turn that to me it's always got to be in the other other way so we we'll turn that to the right so it's the right view and here it is here I know it's that one look because if we pick up those that wheel it, there it is it's at the front so we're going to bring the going to make the models over to the left here left in the right window in the square window right okay so let's make a very basic cylinder which is just going to be surprise surprise cylinder there we are and let's say it's got a radius of let's say one foot three just for the sake of it and we don't want it all those segments let's just rotate it 90 degrees there we are oops there and we want it a bit longer than that because cylinders usually are a little bit longer than that a very short cylinder let's make it three foot six mm, no let's make it four foot it's probably still too, still too small but what the heck we'll go with that and we just left left it at 18 segments 18 uh, faces and we centered it up and now what we need to do is to align it so that it is in the central position uh, for the piston. Let's we'll see what I mean in a moment. Here's the top down view. So here's our cylinder. It's going to be for this side over here. So uh, what we need to do is to align it over here with uh, just come over here and align it, align it with the connecting rod it's going to come out here so at the moment I'm just going to lo loosely move it over and get the exact position as we get there uh, <coughs> so our uh, piston is going to come out of there and then we're going to have the um, uh, driving rod or whatever we call it connecting rod come out and at, on, connect to the eccentric crank so let's do that first uh, so to make it very simple indeed all I'm going to do um, is I'm just going to clone the connecting rod here <coughs> okay. and take a copy take the copy over to the left here and I'm going to unlink it so that it's not going to rotate I'll show you so it no longer rotates with the dummy and uh, so if we look at the top down view of course that's only the connecting rod itself it's not the yeah it's not not enough is it i'll just delete that i'll do it again i'll take the cylinder part and this part and this part oops the, we don't want the dummy we don't want the pin so i'm going to deselect that using the alt button that's what we want let's just group that again while I'm at it and I'm going to clone that group clone okay and I'm gonna I've got the clone selected now so I'm gonna unlink it and I'm just gonna move it across yeah check 
the animation. There we are, look, that's not moving. And um, just to make life easy, uh, I'm just going to use the the same mesh, the same group of meshes. And I'm, I'm going to move it up, I'm going to move it in the correct X axis, stick it on there, right on top of where the uh, connecting rod sits. Now, so I can just sit it straight on top and uh, what I need to do now is I need to position it so that the middle is in the middle of this end is in the middle there we're going to, I'm just going to assume the piston is coming straight out I'm not going to uh, position these at an angle obviously with some locomotives you do um, but all that, that the difference that that makes is that the piston, instead of operating horizontally, it operates at a slight downward angle and you adjust the connecting rod accordingly. So in order to get this so that the middle of this is in the center line there, I'm going to affect the pivot, that is I'm going to change the pivot only. Let's go zoom in a bit. So I'm going to grab the pivot and just like anything else you just do it using whichever axis you like. I'm going to move it along. This is the pivot for the group. Move it along to here. Click away. Now if I select the group it should pivot there. And we want it to pivot on the Y axis. And if you find it jumps back click on there and then move your mouse. Click off that and it's as it were accepts it for some why I don't know but that just seems to be the case so now when I turn this that's the wrong axis must be the Z for some inexplicable reason now when I turn this you can see it's jumping about in five degree increments and although I on the Z axis there <laughs> I like this actually showing it on the X axis here which is wacky but you know all the joy of G max now it's a minus number, so you want to increase the minus because it's still not in the middle position there. You're going to get very used to doing this. I'm just increasing the angle at point, uh, point one of a <coughs> of a degree each time, and that I think is the centre position. Actually, all this is too long, so uh, maybe the cylinder is too close. I'll leave the cylinder just to show you. Uh, but also, they're stacked on top of each other here. That's the other thing about this. So, what we need to do is move this in the x axis over to the right. Until it's just, you don't want it rubbing directly onto the connecting rod. So you want a little gap there. And of course our eccentric pin also has to be lengthened. Here. There we are. So that it is now, and obviously you do this on the other side, so if we zoom in here you can see that now the pin is shown again. Okay, so I'm going to say that that's the length of the connecting rod there. The, is it the piston rod? No, the piston rod comes out of the cylinder, doesn't it? I'm sure there's a name for it. No, not that I know. Um, but I'm not happy with it because I don't think I'm going to need... I'll leave it like that. I'll just leave it like that. But all of this, obviously, um, the crosshead and everything which comes in here, you, it's not just a circle it's quite a complex shape and um, that you'll find that actually you can lose that bit there and it will just be a, um, this piece will just be lost in the crosshead at the end of this <coughs> so let's move this away a bit and we'll make another well we can use this cylinder and we'll clone it and give it a different colour just to distinguish it a bit and reduce the radius down to <coughs> still too big okay we'll go with that for the for, as a basic cylinder 
we can probably lose the number of sides on it as well down to say 12 uh, because it's smaller therefore the detail won't be seen necessarily and make it the other thing is to make it longer I'm wondering if you're beginning to see how it's coming together pretty obvious so now we've got a piston we've got a cylinder we've got the connecting rod the driving rod or whatever it's called and in here should be all the detail of the crosshead but they're not lined up so what we have to do is here make sure we're centered we are and make sure we're centered well we know we're centered on that one so we can align that one this one here with this one here okay now on a number of locomotive bogies you'll find that this is actually cranked out there's a sort of a, a sort of a what do we call it not a z, a z like a sort of front and z shape this is where all your research on the on the locomotive comes in so you know what you're dealing with and all i've done there is i've aligned the piston the, the cylinder so that it's directly centered over the piston the position of the cylinders will almost certainly be obvious from whichever plan of a locomotive that you're using uh, if it's not if you haven't got a top-down plan then a front view plan will show you the cylinder ends and you'll be able to position them because um, that position there you want to get that right to the prototype so if you find it's over here further and the pistons obviously sticking out here then clearly this is cranked out okay and you just adjust it accordingly and that will become pretty obvious when you look at photographs of your model anyway of the original okay so that gets us so far that gets us to a position where we have this strange thing here so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another dummy and uh, so we're going to the top down view to do that here it is and I'm going to position it here to be on the same position as the eccentric pin here's our dummy so let's call that dummy there, and we'll call it um, B R well obviously that's why I called the other Conrod so we'll call it Conrod and we'll call it 04 because we've already used no 03 because we've already used connecting rod 1 and 2 and we'll just zoom in there connect it position it directly over the eccentric pin and the other thing we'll do about it is we'll sorry, one, there we are we'll zoom in, pick it up and we'll link it to axle 1 that's the right one isn't it let's see the hierarchy yes I think it is axle 01, let's link it to that and there we are, flash briefly and as we did before we now just link this by the way you can see there that the bounding box is at an angle so that means what we have to do first before we do anything else is ungroup it reset xref and now that's got a rectangle which is horizontal with regard to the ground which means it's now correctly aligned and um, that's going to be really important as we do these things let's just collapse that back and that just so that because you'll find that you can't actually do anything while the last command get in there the last command I'll try, there it is um, is an X form command you need to have it reduced back to a, um, an editable poly to be able to pick it up so there it is one, two, three. Let's groove it up just to make it easier to handle. And we're going to link it to Conrod. Um, there it is. We're going to link it to this one, which is the little dummy I put here. Okay. So because that dummy there is linked to this and that is rotating, it should all rotate. There we go. So it's just like the connecting rod we saw before. But this time what we have to do is, in animation, we have to edit this um, animation. So although it continues to circle round, 
this end just goes backwards and forwards. So let's have a look at doing that. And um, the way I tend to do this is to use other meshes temporarily to give me a guide. And it's pretty easy to do. I just prefer doing this way. It's just a technique I've made for myself. So I do it. I draw a box like this, and I'm hoping it's long enough. Don't worry about the dimensions; they're really unimportant. Because all I'm going to do is use this bottom edge of the box. And can you see there that the the circle, the cylinder, is touching the edge of that box? And let's zoom in on this one, side view, and let's just click the animation, we can see what's happening. Whee, that's flying around all over the place. So we're going to go back there, and now we're going to animate every frame. Click on animation, and what we're going to be using, well, the one that we're going to be animating is this one here, Conrod 03, the one that controls this. Now we know it's going to rotate round, so that's fine. But now what we're going to do is, with Animate turned on, we're going to go to the first frame. And see here, the numbers have changed, in particular the X reference has changed. Just, let's try first, delete that. But it still means it's dropped down, so... Minus, perversely, takes us up. And we can just look close there. Sometimes you have to flip this in and out to get it to redraw. 1.4 is a bit much. Take it back to 1. Point, oops, not point, 1.35. There we are. And we're on the line. Go to the next frame. Whoa, it disappears. Take that down to zero and start deducting until 1.265. Hmm, you can have hours of innocent enjoyment doing this. 266, mm, 267. Next frame. You can't do this. Well, I've not found a quicker way then. If anybody knows a quicker way, let me know. I shall be eternally grateful. And what you might notice now, that's 3.85 rather than 9. Mm, no, 3.87. 8-8. See what I mean? It's nice to listen to music when you're doing this. Um, is instead of it rotating, it's actually this edge, this point, or this circle, is slowly moving this way. And let's do the next one. See, we're only up to frame 4. We've got 32 to do. <coughs> Oops. There we are. Not. Here it comes. Whee! Slow it down. Five eight. Mm, five eight five. Let's just go with that. See how I'm using this as a guide. Let me do it again. It's still out of sight, so keep zeroing or minusing it to bring it up. And remember all that I'm doing. Now if we just jump back here, and I step through it, let's zoom back a little bit. That's the first six frames of 32 frames. Let's see what is actually happening. So this is a, for the first six frames. It starts off at zero there. Now this is rotating, but this is just moving back. Have a go at doing this. Pause my recording here and I'm going to do the rest and show you the final what it looks like. Okay, so here I am back. I've been doing, done the other frames, it only took a few minutes, and now I'm going to step it through frame by frame so you can see how by adjusting Conrod 03, which is controlling this 
element, this mesh, group of meshes here. You'll notice I decided to extend this as well um, because uh, it was pulling back too far, but I can now delete that. That was just my guide. Now let's step it through the frames. I've turned animation off, but I'm now going to step it through. And it's a bit, it's a little bit wobbly because I didn't bother refining it particularly closely. So if I run it, you can see there's a bit of shape there at about number 20, 25, something like that. But you can go in and refine that if you want to. Uh, I suppose it depends on how old the engine is, how old the locomotive is. <laughs> um, okay, so now what we've got to do is uh, let's have a look at it in this view. And let's play the animation. There we are. So it's flicking about there some very oddly. So there's something not right. perspective or what's happening there. Hmm, it's very odd. It's alright in here. So there's something I've done wrong. I can't see what it is. I'm going to pause the video here and work out what it is and come back to you. Okay, I've I, I identified what I did wrong and that is I've somehow managed to knock the dummy uh, change the position of the dummy it was coming out like this and running back again so I've made sure it's in the correct position throughout the whole cycle of 32 frames and I just run it again there we are now it's looking like it should there we are and now the only other thing we've got to do is to adjust the piston so that it is always in the correct position and uh, what I'll do with that is I'll do another helper I'll create a box this, which I shall delete afterwards after I've, it's done everything that I want it to do and I'll put it in that position and I will link it, doesn't matter that it's over there by the way away from this, perhaps better I will link it to the thing that's the dummy here, Conrad 03 wherever it is, where is it, there it is I'll link it to that and now it'll move in the same way as this is moving so it's just going to be a guide so have a look at that yeah there it is it doesn't matter that it's twisting about and about it's going to give us a basic guide if you see it here in a wireframe looking through the model let's just see what it does rolls about a bit the important thing about it is it does give us the position that the edge of the piston is at the first frame and at the last frame so now we're just going to move this backwards and forwards to keep in that position up against that um, throughout the whole cycle and so we're going to make another dummy and so this will be piston 01 why not make another dummy there we are and we'll call it b.r.piston dot dot 01 you can see why the naming convention can be really useful and I'm centering it on the piston doing what I should have done in the first place which is making sure that's properly aligned and now I can go in here I've still got animate activated so I'm still editing the animation as well and we can get in quite close click on this and go to the first frame and it needs to go along a little bit let me just do this hmm. what did I not do what I didn't do was link this with pot with the piston. So <coughs> back to zero. Let's have a look in our displaced. No, look, you see, it's not connect. It's not. It's not um, linked to the dummy that we just created. I just created. So here, link to piston O one. There it is. Okay. Now we can actually do the animation. So let's click on there and do, go to the first frame and move this along. There we are. Piston's moving. And next frame this is quite quick. And remember you're aiming to get the middle line of the piston onto the yellow. Okay. 
Okay. So it's not very complicated at all. I'm just going to do this fairly quickly. Just to run it through. It's going to look a bit wobbly, but you will spend, of course, you will spend more time and get it nice and precise. Zoom right in and get it nice and precise each time so your valve gear doesn't wobble about all over the place like some poor old locomotives. It's only fit for the scrap road. And each frame, that's all I'm doing. I'm just moving it backwards and forwards. Because we reach a point in the cycle where it starts to move back again. Note, note here, we're out of the cylinder. So we're going to have to extend the size of the piston, the length of the piston. But we'll do that in a minute. Don't do it while you've got the animation on. Just do the animation. There we are. And one bit more. Now it's the cycle is beginning to turn. It's actually beginning to come back. You soon get used to these doing these. And although it seems like a lot of work, and it is a lot of work to do a bogey, once you've done your first one, you think, ah, oh, yes, I'm brilliant. <laughs> and it looks really good. That's why I thought I'd impress you by showing you that Letter Kenny and Burton Port Extension Railway bogey, which is a you know, eight driving wheels. It looks very impressive. And um, lots of things happening with it as well. There we go, let's make sure 25, not many more to go now. I just thought it would be interesting for you to see how we adjust the piston rod. I haven't even textured it yet, so it won't even look very good. 27, 28, I'm just doing this by eye, I'm not measuring it or anything. Of course the closer in you, you zoom, the more accurate you can be. It just depends how much effort you want to put into it. I don't think you I don't think any effort that you put now number 32 wants to be the same as number one. So number 32 just needs to go tad. There it is, to the right. Okay, so there we are. And we can get rid of our marker. Doesn't matter. Let's turn off the animation. Let's have a look here. And although it's a blue piston, and it's going to, well, while we're at it, we might as well extend, turn it into a poly, and move these vertices a bit deeper into the cylinder. You can't see it, of course, because it's buried in the cylinder, so it doesn't actually come out. And of course, here you've probably got extra pieces on this side of the cylinder and extra pieces on this side uh, to create the full effect of the cylinder all the it's usually bolts and goodness that's what they're different cylinder covers and everything okay right let's see it go there we are that's our cylinder and our piston now we'll be having a slurp of coffee so what we might like to do with this now is texture it and for this one we might like to use shiny frames because it is going in and out after all and let's make it a bit lighter remember there's the two textures there's the actual this texture and then there's the reflection texture and it's always this one that you need to use to line up more or less where everything is here yeah, we've included a bit of rust in it so i'll be a bit more generous put it that way and that will come out sort of shiny-ish. But it's also wider than this. Um, that cylinder there would normally not be there. It would normally be part of a much more complex crosshead, as we saw with the lot swilly um, bogey. So we'll save this. And we'll save it as our 1.2 as well. There we are. And that pretty much concludes the this bit of the tutorial I think uh, let's just have another look admire our work sit back drink our coffee admire it say how wonderful we are but you can see there where horizontal movement or movement in one axis because some you know, cylinders are often set at an angle has been converted into circular motion at this end and we've got everything working together and it all looks like it pinks up it looks like a, a cylinder 
is driving the driving wheels. Okay, so there we are. That's uh, pretty much everything that um, to give you the basics of making a bogey. And uh, if you want to uh, add extra pieces in here, fair enough. That's the, the pretty straightforward. Just adding meshes, and they're either activated. For example, the crosshead would be linked to this dummy, and move backwards and forwards on the static slides. And you do the same, of course, on the other side. And always, um, if you want to use the same meshes on the other side, make sure, first of all, that you clone them and move them over, and that you unlink them and then re and then link them to dummies on that side, so that we have a collection of dummies there. Uh, and just to go back to I'll conclude this by going back to that driving bogey um, that I've shown before. Now it perhaps begins to make a little bit more sense. Lots of things moving away. Uh, here's our piston again, and here's our connecting rod. Yeah, and here we've got uh, this. I think is part of is it part of Valshet's gear? Maybe it's doing something anyway. Those rocking backwards and forwards, and it's necessary. But you can see there's just a collection of these dummies operating the meshes. You can see the distances there, the positions. The cylinders are made up of, first of all, of a cylinder with a box on top, and then I merge the two meshes together. Here's some more detail look to for the piston to go in and out. But there are a lot of, there's quite a few things that aren't moving uh, it, at this end, and these these just rocking about. Very little movement to add in, and you just edit those frame by frame. So I hope that's made made some sort of sense of this uh, particular. Uh, quite complex looking bogey, which it isn't, it's just multiplying up and then adding these little finicky bits uh, and uh, that gives you the final model.